Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are just past the 2039 trade deadline. It's been a good, solid season for the Buffalo Wings so far. 59 and 45 record. We are up 6.5 on the Phillies, 7.5 on the Braves, 8 on the Marlins, and 9.5 on the Mets in the competitive National League East. Uh, we are also at this point in a flat-footed tie with the San Diego Padres and the Colorado Rockies for the best record in the National League. A uh, number of really good teams in the American League this year, so it's quite possible we won't end up with the best record in baseball. But if we win in eighth consecutive NL East and have the best record in the National League when this episode is done, I'll take that as a uh, sound finish to the season. Made just one move as we approach the trade deadline. It was a relatively big one. We are renting uh, former American League most valuable player Kenny Lavari for the last couple of months of the season. Uh, he came to us uh, about three days ago. He was banged up with an injury, but he is uh, healthy as he's going to be now although he is still fragile in terms of his injury proneness. So he'll be making his debut for us today against the Cincinnati Reds. Hope that Lavari, with his 150 career WRC plus and uh, still a very effective bat at this point in his career, can help us uh, ensure that we do end up winning uh, the NL East and also having the best record in the National League. Uh, you can see bringing on Lavari uh, gives us the player who's leading the National League in OPS, second in batter war, and third in the race for the National League batting title at this point. And before we start uh, simming through the last two months of the season, I uh, just wanted to take a look back at our catcher situation uh, Getting on me for the extension that we signed Andres Medina to uh, about a year and a half ago has been a popular theme in the comment section and uh, certainly 81 games uh, in terms of games played into the season for him. Uh, barely hitting above the Mendoza line with only six home runs and 274 at-bats. So his offensive performance has been brutal. Uh, still a very good defensive catcher and a positive influence in the clubhouse. Uh, we have started giving Mitch Houlihan, who's hitting very well for us, a little more playing time. Uh, we're starting him every third game against right-handed pitching. Uh, I'm not not playing Houlihan uh, to keep his arbitration number down. His arbitration number, as you can see, is $4.4 million. So he's kind of uh, being paid, I believe, as if he's a... Uh, pretty established catcher uh, when he gets to his first arbitration year. But uh, I didn't really talk about it much in the last episode, but I did attempt to trade away Andres Medina, or at least see what the market for him looked like uh, with a team that's trying to get into the playoffs for a 12th consecutive year. He didn't really have uh, any incentive or any interest in waiving his no-trade clause. Uh, so at this point, we've got him for the rest of this season, and unless he changes his tune this offseason for next year as well, uh, at which point we would likely be hoping that he opts out of the final season of that uh, three- to four-year contract we signed him to. But assuming that we have Medina around next year, uh, I'm kind of envisioning Houlihan being someone that we would look to trade away this offseason if uh, there's no way for us to get Medina off the roster. Uh, would likely try to extract some value for Houlihan, even though I love the way he's hitting the majors so far, simply because uh, we've got Jorge Berrios, who is not quite as good defensively, but still an above average uh, potential defensive catcher who, although he's hitting only 221 in AAA this year, has a 376 on base percentage. Uh, he has just an incredible eye, uh, which despite his lack of contact 
has allowed him over the course of his minor league career to have a 400 on base percentage despite hitting just 205. And uh, Mr. Barrios is in his last option year this season. So we're going to have to likely figure out a way to get him up to the major leagues next year. Clearly, if we were able to platoon Barrios and Houlihan, that would be the most cost-effective solution and certainly something I will investigate when we get to the offseason. Uh, but as I said, I'm not necessarily expecting Medina to waive his no-trade clause. And if he does, rather than spending four, four and a half million for Houlihan next year, think that we will look to move on from him in the offseason, try to extract some value back in a trade, and then promote Barrios, who would be competing with Medina to be our catcher next season. So that's kind of the high-level plan with the catchers at this point. We've been uh, doing a pretty good job selling out or coming really close to selling out uh, most of our games. Uh, revenue down just slightly from last year as our ticket price is down a little bit. Uh, we have kind of feel like we're, we're capped out on how many fans we can get into the seats in Buffalo, but uh, pretty glad that we're trying to... Uh, come close to maximizing attendance uh, while also generating a fair amount of revenue. But right now, we're going to uh, turn our attention to this schedule for the last uh, couple months of the season, uh, starting off the first couple weeks in September with a uh, long homestand against the Reds, the Expos, and the Phillies. And then we are going to head to Pittsburgh um, before continuing the road trip in Seattle, back home for a weekend series against the Mighty Yankees. Uh, then we're off to some divisional games in Atlanta and Philadelphia before finishing up the month of August uh, against the Washington Nationals, at which point rosters will expand and we'll have some uh, interesting decisions uh, who to bring up from the minors that we'll talk through at that time. And it's been a rough start for us uh, this first week in August, two and three over our first five games, uh, which is not great, but that's not the real reason for the rough start. As uh, often seems to happen, as soon as we get past the trade deadline, we have a pretty significant injury. Steve Anderson, who's our starting shortstop against right-handed pitching, out for about three months with post-concussion syndrome. Unless he recovers from that a little early, and we make a long run in the playoffs, uh, likely means that his season is over. Hit 265 with 19 doubles, 16 homers, and 9 steals, and 355 at bats. So a 116 WRC plus a 3.5 war. Uh, he's also a pretty competent defensive shortstop, uh, a little bit above average in terms of his zone rating and defensive efficiency. So certainly uh, losing him is not optimal for uh, what we want this team to achieve this year. Uh, he's also going to be looking at a 12 and a half ish million dollar arbitration number next year. So Anderson uh, is starting to be a guy whose long-term future with us was in doubt anyways. Uh, we're hoping to extract as much value as possible out of him this year. And unfortunately, as I said, unless he has a uh, surprisingly quick recovery and we make it to the NLCS or more likely the World Series, we're uh, unlikely to see Steve Anderson again here in 2039, which is disappointing. And we went for a veteran to replace Anderson. Uh, we brought up the 34-year-old Young Hoon Bay from... Albany. Uh, he's a minor league free agent that we signed uh, in March. Uh, was a part-time player for us in Albany. Uh, incredibly productive in terms of his power, though, with 31 home runs and just 252 at-bats. Also uh, brings a positive influence into our clubhouse, helpfully help offset uh, some of Lavari and Joe Gallagher's personality quirks a bit. He is another guy who's just going to strike out an insane amount of time, uh, but hopefully is a 
pinch hitter off the bench from time to time and an occasional first baseman or DH. He can uh, give us a little bit of pop in the lineup. Uh, besides that, we slid Tim Hull, who has been platooning with Anderson at shortstop, um, but Hull been the guy playing less frequently against left-handed pitching. Uh, Hull is now going to be our full-time shortstop, which he was uh, four or five years ago at this point before Steve Anderson made his major league debut, and they uh, quickly moved into a platoon situation where Hull's become more of a utility infielder for us. And after the slow start to the month, uh, we've been playing better since then. Ended up winning the final two games against Montreal to take that four-game series. Three out of four. Took two out of three at home against the Phillies. And we just took two out of three on the road at Pittsburgh. So as we get to uh, August 15th and the midway point in the month, uh, we're up nine on the Phillies and nine and a half on both the Mets and the Braves. We're the only team in the National League at East, East uh, at this point with a winning record. And we are half a game ahead of the Cardinals, who have been surging with seven straight wins for the best record in the National League. Uh, the Padres and the Rockies, both three and seven over their last ten. Uh, so we have broken away from those two clubs, but the uh, surging Cardinals look like they're going to give us uh, all we can handle in terms of hopefully earning the best record in the National League. And unfortunately, it was a rough week for us. Uh, we lost two out of three in Seattle, and then we lost two out of three at home against the Yankees. So uh, given that we're one of the top teams in the National League, uh, kind of shows the superiority of the American League. Uh, in a very small sample size, admittedly, but at 69 and 54, we're now half a game behind the Cardinals for the best record in the NL, and our lead on the Mets has slipped to six and a half. Uh, hopefully, we can play a bit better over uh, this last week and a half of August uh, before we get to September roster expansion and uh, go in with a 30 man roster that should. Uh, really help us optimize all of our lineup and uh, in-game decisions. And we've made it to September roster expansion, and we're going to need all the help that we can bring up, because after losing those series to Seattle and the Yankees, uh, we lost three out of four in Atlanta, and we lost two out of three in Fidel Philadelphia. So four consecutive series that we lost before we finally salvaged a series uh, today against Washington, winning two out of three, or more accurately, yesterday against Washington. So... The division has become tighter. Uh, the Mets have won nine in a row, and we're only a game and a half up on the Mets and only three and a half up on the Phillies at this point. So uh, things are getting more interesting than we would have hoped. Uh, St. Louis at 79 and 56 is three and a half games ahead of us now for the best record in the National League. Uh, the Padres are also better than us, and uh, the Reds and the Rockies are not too far behind. Honestly, the Mets aren't too far behind us uh, for the third best record in the National League either. So it was not a good month of August when all was said and done. We were hoping that bringing on Kenny Lavari was going to uh, help us play better. Uh, and you can see after a really nice start to the season in April and May, We've been a pretty average team overall across June, July, and August. Uh, over those three months combined, we're one game under 500. Uh, you can still say that we're a team that's gotten very unlucky. It's 73 and 60. Uh, we're six games below our Pythagorean expectation. Still sixth in the National League in runs scored. Still first in the National League in runs allowed. Take a quick look at uh, what Mr. Lavari has done for us since he came over. Uh, he's hit 274 with six homers and 20 ribbies and nine doubles in 106 at bats. Uh, so a 131 WRC plus, um, not hitting quite at the torrid pace he had been playing at with the Dodgers, uh, but certainly has been a 
very productive offensive player for us over the month that uh, he has been wearing the red and yellow of the Buffalo Wings. And we brought four interesting players up. Uh, we were going to kind of give a lifetime achievement award to one guy and give him a September call up, but he's banged up right now. But more to come on uh, him if a uh, spot opens up on the roster due to injury. But outside of uh, that, we brought up Jorge Clamaco. You may remember him. He was an international free agent signing in 2031. He's a 25-year-old now, uh, has a little bit of speed, good personality, uh, can play any position in the outfield as well as first base. He's been at Albany for the last three years, and he's hit over 300 every year, uh, 126, 129, and 121 WRC pluses. Not a ton of home run power, although he's been reasonably productive at the AAA level. Uh, but a guy who is probably a fourth or fifth outfielder going forward um, has just kind of been caught in a numbers game for us over the years. So at 25 years old, he's going to get to at least make his debut, see what he can do in uh, hopefully 10 or 15 at-bats over the next uh, month or so. We also brought Nelson Rojas back up. You may remember we picked him up in a trade with the Marlins this past offseason. He's hit 278 with 38 homers and 117 ribbies in triple a albany so he doesn't really have anything left to prove at that level and at this point uh, we think he's fully developed in everything except avoiding strikeouts he was only two for 19 in a brief stint uh, with the big club earlier another guy who has some speed is pretty versatile and pretty decent defensively in the outfield so uh, hopefully we'll be able to get mr Rojas some at-bats as well over the next uh, month or so. Also uh, brought up two pitchers, uh, Inihiro Miyake, who you may remember uh, we sent down, uh, kind of got caught up in a numbers game after he was the one reliever in our bullpen who wasn't absolutely dominant. Uh, the left-hander's been better in Albany, and uh, now he's up with the big club the rest of the way. And then the last addition is uh, one of the top prospects in our system, Devin Cabuto, who was our first round pick uh, back in 2035. Uh, he's really kind of come on the last couple of years, now looked at the number 89 prospect in baseball. Uh, like the fact that he's durable, has some personality traits that are pretty positive. Doesn't throw incredibly hard, only throws in the mid to low 90s. You can see his stuff is only average for a major leaguer, uh, but he's got really good movement on his pitches, uh, above average control that could be well above average if he keeps developing, uh, excellent sinker to go with a decent fastball and a decent cutter. Not much left for him to prove in the minors. Uh, was 9-1 with a 2.15 ERA and more than a strikeout per inning in AA Utica. Promoted him to AAA Albany, where he also started 14 games. Was 5-3 down there with a 2.68 ERA and more than a strikeout per inning there as well. He's combined for a 7.5 war this year across those two levels. And we are actually going to move Mr. Cabuto right into our rotation. I'm real happy with our top four guys who have been our top four guys for the last few years. Barajas, Shazir, Mendoza, and Estrada. But the rookie Eric Barbarito is 8-10 and 10 with a 5-11 ERA. I uh, certainly think that Barbarito, uh, with his profile, has a spot in our rotation uh, for the medium to long term, still viewed as the number 38 prospect in baseball. But since he hasn't been particularly effective for us uh, with that 5'11 ERA, uh, below average ERA plus, a fit minus that's pretty close to average, um, we're going to work him out of the bullpen over the last month of the season uh, just to ensure that uh, Mr. Cabuto uh, gets the opportunity to pitch a few more innings at the major league level and pitch every fifth day since it's conceivable that uh, those two gentlemen will be battling for a uh, fifth spot in the rotation next year. Uh, and it's possible that they could be battling for fourth and fifth spots if we decide not to 
exercise our option on Juan Estrada. So uh, a lot of interesting decisions coming up for us this off season. Uh, right now, we're just focused on trying to uh, ensure that we can win an eighth consecutive National League East. And uh, that game and a half lead on the Mets, three and a half game lead on the Phillies, uh, things have gotten a lot, of, lot tighter than we expected over the last couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully with some young talent on the team that will help us uh, ensure that we can hold off those two teams and perhaps get by St. Louis and San Diego for the best record in the National League before the regular season is over. And other than trying to also keep the team as healthy as possible for the playoffs, uh, we'll be watching Deshaun Seifu uh, with 57 stolen bases and uh, our former outfielder Bobby Bolig tied for second in the league with Jaheim Lawal at 32. Seifu uh, looks certain to lead the National League in steals for a 12th consecutive season. Uh, what we'll be trying to follow with him though is will he get 11 stolen bases over the month of September to uh, join Ricky Henderson in the 1,000 stolen base club. Uh, Seifu passed Lou Brock for number two on the all-time list uh, earlier this season. Uh, the pace he's going probably should just about get 11, may even get a couple more than that, but who knows uh, how things are actually going to look um, over the coming month or so till the season is over. Uh, batting averages dipped to 286, so down a little bit since the All-Star break. Definitely not um, not generating the crazy number of extra base hits that he has in some years. He's led the league in doubles twice and triples six times over the course of his career. Uh, thought a couple of years ago that he had an outside shot at getting to 200 career triples with 152 now and him being 35 years old looks like he's probably going to finish this year with eight or nine i think getting to 200 may prove to be uh just a little bit too much in that category for mr seifu but we will continue following what he does over the course of the final month of the season uh one thing that i would like any viewers who are interested in opining on to opine on is whether we should exercise that team option for Seifu next year at $25 million. Uh, I absolutely intend to have Seifu back on the team next year, uh, so it's not a question of whether we are going to have Seifu back or want Seifu back. Uh, my goal at this point is to run through an entire career with the former number one overall pick, uh, having been on our team throughout his career. But I'm kind of thinking um, we might be able to get him back for a little bit less than $25 million and also take that player option uh, for the season after next at $25 million out of play if we decline that team option and maybe try to sign him for a little bit less money uh, per season, but maybe a few extra years to keep him under our control. If you've got thoughts on whether that would be a prudent path forward or not, uh, and you're willing to share them in the comment section, I uh, would certainly love to hear them. And with the rosters expanded, we got off to a good start, uh, taking three straight on the road in Kansas City. Uh, this week ahead of us, uh, we're going to be in Las Vegas for three against the A's and then three against the Dodgers at home. Uh, so we're going to be home against uh, the A's and then home against the Dodgers. Uh, after that, we're at San Diego and Colorado. Uh, those are two teams right in the mix for the playoffs. Uh, then home against Pittsburgh and Montreal at Miami. And then we're going to finish off the month uh, with a series at the Mets, four games at the Mets to finish off things. So that could be a pretty important series uh, with the four wins in a row we're up to right now. We're up two and a half on the Mets, uh, but they are still very competitive with us. Uh, we're behind St. Louis and San Diego still for the best record in the National League. So 
a lot they will be determined over these last uh four weeks of the season or so certainly uh nothing is set in stone as far as uh where we are going to end up uh we've talked we want to win an eighth consecutive nl east to avoid a wild card series not that uh, being in the divisional series has helped us the last two seasons where we've been taken out by wild card teams a uh, total of six games to one in those two series but still would prefer to avoid uh, that wild card series uh, magic number for the division for us is down to 24 at this point take a quick look uh, at the injured list and uh, we still think we're about two months away from steve anderson so it doesn't seem like he's healing any faster than we anticipated uh, so i think it is uh unlikely at this point that we'll be seeing mr anderson again this season unfortunately And it ended up being an excellent homestand for our Buffalo Wings, which is just what we needed. Uh, we took five out of six overall against the A's and the Dodgers. Uh, so we've got a day off today uh, before heading out on that big road trip against San Diego and Colorado. As I mentioned, those are two teams that are certainly in the playoff mix. Uh, at 81 and 61, uh, we're now 9 and 1 in our last 10, up 4.5 on the Mets and 5 on the Phillies. Magic number down to 16. Uh, we're still behind the Cardinals for the best record in the National League. Uh, the Padres are just behind us, and uh, the Rockies uh, right now would be on the outside looking in for the playoffs. Three and a half behind the Hilly Phillies for that final playoff spot. Uh, that's a team that. Uh, has given us some problems in the playoffs over the last four or five years at times, uh, so wouldn't mind uh, potentially missing out on them as a potential foe when we do get to the postseason. And we just won the first game of our road trip against the Padres, which is positive. Uh, unfortunately, Elvin Jimenez, uh, excellent reliever for us, is suffering from a sore thumb. Uh, unknown when he'll be healthy. Um, he's also got hamstring soreness, it looks like. Uh, multiple, it doesn't look like multiple injuries there. It says hamstring soreness, but uh, it also says he's suffering from a sore thumb. Interesting, uh, says that there's no impact on his throwing. Given that uh, we're close to starting to clinch uh, the division and we've added a couple of decent pitchers to our roster um, we're going to be real conservative with him uh, we're going to actually place him on the il effective to a few days ago and that'll allow us to bring up another player to the major league roster And with the spot on our roster, uh, we are going to give a Lifetime Achievement Award to Hans Reis, who is a 33-year-old, almost 34-year-old. He was an international free agent signing of ours in our first international free agent signing period of 2024. He's never actually made it above AA Utica, uh, but he is a guy with some positive personality traits and uh, he's been with us basically since the start of this playthrough. Uh, he's re-signed with us as a minor league free agent uh, a few times. Had some hopes for him in the early stages of his career, uh, but now you can see he's been at AA Utica since 2031, uh, with one exception when we actually started him down in high A ball this year. Uh, don't expect him to get much playing time, but uh, Hans Reis will always be able to say that uh, he was a Major League Baseball player. And it's been a pretty mediocre road trip so far. Uh, we lost two out of three in San Diego. We've split the first two with Colorado, so if we uh, win today, we can still salvage the series. Unfortunately, another uh, pretty significant injury for us, and it impacts our pitching staff. Our uh, excellent young closer, Joe Scott, uh, out for the year, torn triceps. Uh, 
So that's going to leave a big hole in our bullpen. Uh, Triceps uh, was an all-star this season. He was the Mariano Rivera Award winner a year ago after we picked him up in a trade with San Diego to become our closer. 5-7 and seven record with 31 saves this year. 87 strikeouts in 63 and a third innings, 2.13 ERA, put up a war of close to three uh, despite pitching just 63 and a third innings. So that's going to certainly leave a big hole in our bullpen. Um, does make me feel a little bit better about the fact that we were uh, very conservative with Elvin Jimenez, putting him on the IL to hopefully ensure that he recovers from that hamstring soreness because. Uh, while we hold out a tiny bit of hope that we may see Anderson towards the end of the playoffs, um, hopefully Jimenez will be healthy, uh, but there's absolutely no way Joe Scott will recover from that. So that is definitely a big blow to our chances to uh, go on a long postseason run, but it'll be a next man up kind of scenario for our excellent bullpen. And for the time being, uh, we're going to promote Juan Beliz to closer. Uh, Nate Ruckel has uh, filled in this year in our high-volume stopper role, uh, 125 and two-thirds innings with a 372 ERA. Uh, Beliz with a 111 ERA over a much more manageable workload of 48 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, but he struck out 63 over those 48 and two-thirds innings. Uh, his ERA has been around one each of the past two seasons since we uh, brought him back to the team uh, with that trade with the Mets. Uh, so Valiz moves into the closer role uh, with the injuries uh, to multiple pitchers now. Uh, we've got some new setup in middle relievers. And uh, Robbie Farrell, who we picked up in a trade with Boston uh, about two and a half years ago, uh, 26 year old reliever now almost 27 he's been mediocre in Albany quite honestly kind of average in terms of his ERA plus but his fit minus has been uh, pretty strong Sierra is better than his ERA uh, we look at his ratings and think he could be a pretty useful major league pitcher and uh, Mr. Farrell is going to get a chance to make his debut for us uh, here over the last couple weeks of the season. Hopefully we can get this win against Colorado to at least salvage a 500 road trip. Three and a half up on the Mets now. And at 83 and 64, we're a game behind the Cardinals and a game ahead of the Padres for the best record in the National League. Uh, Deshaun Seifu stands with 65 steals right now, so he is three steals away from joining the 1,000 stolen base club. And unfortunately, we lost the uh, rubber game of the series against the Rockies, so uh, lose both series on the road. We've got four against Pittsburgh and three against Montreal at home, the final home stand of the season. Only up two and a half on the Mets, um, but Pittsburgh is uh, the worst team in the division, 28 games behind. And the Expos, despite having high expectations when this uh, season began, are only one game over 500. So hopefully those home games will enable us to... Uh, kind of turn this thing around a little bit. Uh, we're now two games behind the Cardinals for the best record in the National League uh, and only two and a half up on the Mets, as I said. So uh, things are getting tight here, tighter than they've typically been uh, in the last seven years when we've won the National League East. Had some close battles, but uh, in many cases we were running away with the division by this time uh, in mid to late September. And unfortunately, this uh, once promising season is really spiraling out of control. Uh, we took the first game of the homestand against Pittsburgh, uh, but have lost six in a row since then. So we lost three out of four to Pittsburgh, and then we were swept by the Expos at home, uh, scoring just one run in each game. So at this point, uh, we have lost eight of our last nine games. And what that means in the standings is that we are now in a flat-footed tie with the Phillies and the Mets for the National League East. 
uh, magic number is eight. Uh, all three of us are a game and a half up on the final wild card spot, so we still should be in the playoffs when all was said and done, but uh, clearly we're going to have to win a few more games to get there. At 84 and 71, uh, we're now eight games behind the surging Cardinals for the uh, best record in the National League. So uh, no chance of us getting past them with seven games to go, uh, three at Miami, and then four against the Mets in uh, a series that is likely to uh, determine who wins the division. Uh, you would think if uh, us or the Mets sweep that series or take three out of four, we'll probably be the division winners. If uh, Buffalo and the Mets split that series, uh, probably gives a good opportunity for the Phillies to maybe sneak in and take that division. Uh, real disappointing to lose three out of four to the Pirates and um, can understand getting swept by the Expos at least since they are a team that uh, is still on the periphery of the wild card race three and a half back now. But uh, it's going to be a pressure-packed final week of the season for the Buffalo Wings. Uh, Deshaun Seifu with 67 steals uh, stands at 999 career stolen bases at this point. Uh, so one more steal will give him a 1,000 for his career. And if he scores three more runs, uh, that will give him a sixth consecutive season with 100 runs scored and uh, will enable him to do that for the seventh time in his career. Uh, batting average has dipped to 279 at this point. He's been a pretty average offensive player when all is said and done uh, this season. So um, hoping to see something out of him and the rest of this team over the last week of the season. Uh, Hans Reis, um, we're going to send him back down. 0 for 2, um, only played in one game. Uh, don't expect whoever we bring up for him will have a significant role, but uh, with our, I don't want to say our backs are up against the wall, but with a lot more pressure on this team, um, want to make sure that we have as many levers available for our manager this final week of the season as possible. So uh, Hans Reis, thank you for uh, your service to our team over the last, uh, in our organization over the last 16 years. Uh, I doubt we will see you in the major leagues again. And we did break the six-game losing streak on the road against the Marlins, uh, so that was positive news. Uh, the Mets looked like they lost, so we're uh, tied with the Phillies now for the lead in the division. Uh, also, one good piece of news. Um, Jimenez is uh, back and healthy after we stashed him on the IL, uh, so that should help our bullpen. Uh, we have brought up, in addition to Robbie Farrell recently, uh, we also recently allowed Juan Aceves, a uh, 22-year-old international free agent signing from 2034 to come up. Um, he's made it all the way from high A ball up to uh, AAA at the end of this season. Hasn't pitched for us in the one day that he's been up with the big club. Uh, he may be the one who ends up getting sent down to AAA, but uh, we'll uh, figure out exactly who that's going to be, but happy to have Jimenez back as we uh, try to ensure that we can win an eighth consecutive division title. And with uh, six games left in the season, it is by no means assured. And we are going to uh, switch things up a bit and put Jimenez into that closer role. Um, Juan Veliz, uh, if we put him back into a setup role, we can use him as a left-handed specialist, which given that um, Espinosa, Borgian, and Miyaki are other lefties in the pen outside of the closer, uh, the stopper, Ruckel, aren't uh, particularly different against left-handed and right-handed batters, whereas Veliz is definitely better against lefty uh, batters. think that having him hopefully in a setup role with a secondary role as a lefty specialist, which uh, will allow us to 
hopefully use him a little more uh, high pressure situations while still uh, having the excellent Helvin Jimenez in our closer role uh, should hopefully ensure that we get some good work in the ninth inning. And unfortunately, we lost the second game of the series uh, to Miami 4-3. to um, And for the first time since the very early days of the season when we got off to that 0-2 start here on September 28th, our uh, Buffalo Wings are no longer in first place. Uh, we're only up one game on the final wild card at this point. Um, magic number is two for uh, clinching a wild card spot. Um, but uh, the division is certainly in question at this point. I uh, got a final game at Miami. They are uh, four and a half back. Uh, they're not technically eliminated yet, but we could eliminate them, I believe, if we win today. Uh, so hopefully we can at least take the rubber game of the series today against the Marlins and then... Uh, set ourselves up for a critical series against the Mets. Uh, we'll take a look at the Phillies and just see who are they are going to be facing uh, down the stretch. Oh, I'm still looking at us. Uh, the Phillies... Uh, if I could pick the Phillies properly... That would be a helpful thing. Uh, the Phillies are going to have a couple more games against Washington, and then they are going to finish up against the Miami Marlins at home. So certainly a uh, bad Washington team, and then the uh, Marlins, who could be out of it by the time they face them, seems like a, a bit of an easier path than... Uh, the Wings and the Mets are facing here. So would certainly think at this point the uh, surging Phillies, who are 7-3 and three in their last 10 and who have won four in a row, probably would be the odds-on favorites to dethrone us uh, in the NL East this year. And unfortunately, Miami took the final game of the series against us. Uh, so taking a look at the standings here ahead of the final four games of the season, and we have now dipped to third place. <laughs> game, uh, two games behind the Phillies and a game behind the Mets. Uh, we are tied with the Reds for the final wild card spots in the National League. Uh, we're up four on the Rockies in the Expos at this point, so our magic number is down to one to ensure a 12th consecutive playoff appearance. Uh, but the odds of an eighth consecutive division title are dwindling by the moment, and the uh, opportunity for us to uh, avoid a first round wild card series are similarly dwindling. Seifu still one stolen base away from the 1,000 stolen base club. And we did clinch the playoff spot today. Uh, four to nothing win over the Mets. Um, so that puts us in the playoffs and puts us in a, a flat-footed tie for second in the National League East with them. Uh, Devin Cabuto, the rookie uh, who we brought up at the Trade deadline is now 3-2 three and two with a 362 ERA. Ruckel picked up his 30th save of the year. And uh, Veliz uh, pitched the ninth to uh, close things out for us. Uh, Seifu still uh, a stolen base away, 0 for 5 today. And that dips his batting average to 276. Uh, so definitely not a... Uh, vintage season for Seifu or for the Wings in general because that 276 average is the uh, highest on our team at this point. Take a look at the standings. Obviously we're hoping that Philadelphia lost. Uh, unfortunately they did not so they are two games up on both us and the Mets. Um, at this point uh, it's really a battle to see which two teams end up um, hosting those wild card series Right now we're in a uh, flat-footed tie with the Mets to see who would host a series. So I would say the minimum goal is to win two of these last three, which would should ensure that uh, we'll at least be hosting a wild-card series. And if we win uh, two out of three, 
there's a chance that could mean that we'd end up in a tie with the Phillies, but realistically, we're going to need to sweep this four-game series against the Mets, um, which means winning three in a row at this point, and uh, also have some luck to uh, get past the Phillies for the division title. And unfortunately, the Mets beat us 7-4. Uh, to four. The Phillies did lose, so we're two behind the Phillies with two games to go. But at this point, the best we can hope for is to end up tied for the NL East title. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to win both games against the Mets uh, and have the Phillies lose both of their games. Um, I believe it's the Marlins that they are playing at this point. And we did get a 4-1 to one win against the Mets, and Deshaun Seifu got the 1,000th stolen base of his career in the penultimate game of the season. Uh, Seifu was 0-4 for 4 on the game, though, uh, but did, as I said, get his 1,000th steal of the career. Uh, Juan Estrada got the victory, uh, hold for Ruckel, a save for Jimenez. Juan Romero, who was 3-for-4 uh, four four with a couple of rivies uh, and also a couple of home runs, was the player of the game for us. Uh, Kenny Lavari, whose batting average is dipped to 242, did hit his ninth home run for us. Does have 35 ribbies and 182 at-bats, so although the batting average has been uh, very disappointing, he's still been productive, but the streak of consecutive National League East titles for the Buffalo Wings is going to end at seven. The Phillies have clinched the National League East, and whoever wins uh, between the Mets and us will be hosting the uh, hosting a wild card series. So um, we're going to have to put everything out there to uh, try to ensure that we get home field advantage. It's conceivable that we'll be playing the Mets again. Uh, if we win this and Cincinnati also loses, uh, it will just be a rematch of us and the Mets in Buffalo. If we lose this game and Cincinnati also loses, uh, it'll be a rematch of the two New York teams, but it will be taking place in Queens. And unfortunately, uh, we lost to the Mets 9-4 to on the final day of the season. Uh, so what that means is we are just going to stay in New York and get ready for a three-game series at the Mets. Um, so certainly not an optimal way for us to end the season. We also had our ace, Alexis Barajas, on the mound there in game 162. Uh, so we will be without our ace um, for that three-game series against the Mets, which certainly is not ideal. So a real tough finish to this season for these Buffalo Wings. Um, as I said, uh, the streak of seven consecutive NL East titles is over. Uh, we still have the streak of 12 consecutive playoff appearances uh, going uh, perhaps not entirely coincidentally, um, that streak is the same as the 12 consecutive years that Deshaun Seifu has led the National League in stolen bases uh, with the lack of offense uh, over those final several days of the season, uh, did avoid by just one run, uh, having 100 runs or more scored for a sixth consecutive season so uh, certainly a bit of a down year for Mr. Seifu put up that 4.3 war uh, driven by his defense and his excellence on the base paths but um, a below average offensive season for him uh, measured by OPS plus and WRC plus and the last time that occurred was uh, nine years ago when he was a 25 year old so uh as I mentioned before, if you've got thoughts on whether I should ultimately uh, opt out of this contract uh, this coming off offseason, I uh, would certainly appreciate hearing those in the comment section down below. We'll uh, tackle the playoffs in our next episode, and it's going to be uh, coming from a 
very different position for our Buffalo Wings. Uh, we will be on the road, and we will also be playing in a wild card series for the first time in the better part of a decade. So uh, interesting that uh, it's also going to be the team that we've just faced four in a row on their home turf. Uh, we split those first four. Uh, so essentially, it's a uh, seven-game series that we've turned into a best of three. But unfortunately for us, all of those games are going to be on the road. And we'll find out what happens in the postseason for our Buffalo Wings in our next episode. Will it be over in two or three days? Or will we uh, perhaps be able to find something that we haven't had over these last four months of the season in um, in the playoffs. Uh, we're in a position right now where, uh, unfortunately, Scott is obviously gone, and uh, with Anderson five weeks away, incredibly unlikely that we'll see him again this year. So uh, lost our starting shortstop and lost our closer, uh, which is not optimal for the playoffs but everyone else has injuries as well and we're just going to have to hope that uh, we find something that we as I said have not uh, really had for many months at this point over the final four plus months of the season uh, we were a losing team after those two good um, months to start the season Still unlucky when all is said and done, uh, but not as unlucky as uh, we were before. We should be 91 and 71, so four games above um, expectations. But our offense has uh, really weakened over this second half of the year. 10th in the National League in runs scored, 13th in batting average. Um, still have an excellent pitching staff, uh, though our starters ERA has slipped to fourth. Still have allowed the... Uh, fewest runs in the National League, so uh, we're going to be reliant on pitching to try to get us through the playoffs this year because uh, our offense has uh, really struggled over these last several months of the season. And we'll find out if we are able to catch lightning in a bottle with our offense in the next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.